Sin is never okay. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about sin. Now, sin is anytime we do something that God says not to do. When you do what is wrong, you sin. And I want to talk to you about sin because I know that a lot of us, me, me included, we try to excuse our sin, right? We, we look at bad things we've done and we say, oh, well, it really wasn't my fault. Or we might say, you know, it isn't that big a deal. But the truth is, sin is always a big deal. If God says something is wrong, it's wrong. And I think a lot of times we try to pass the blame for our actions onto somebody else, right? Like if I get in trouble for pushing my brother, I'm going to be like, well, I only pushed him because he broke my toy. Have you ever played with dominoes where you like, you like stack up the dominoes in, in like a long line and then you tip over one domino and then that domino knocks over the one in front of it and then that one and knocks over the one in front of it and then down the line and, and sometimes people make, you know, cool videos of stuff where they'll like make really big domino sculptures and they'll knock down the whole thing by just, just knocking over one domino and then it's a long chain reaction. And sometimes I feel like we view ourselves as dominoes, right? Like we say, oh, don't blame me for knocking down that guy over there because that guy back there, he knocked me down first, right? Like we think that because we were wronged, we can do wrong to others. But that's not how it works. You know, all of us are like trying to blame the person behind us for the things that we have done. But you know, the truth is we can go all the way back to the beginning. We can go back to the first domino that got knocked over, so to speak. Right? Because when God made people, Adam and Eve, the first two humans, God put them in this beautiful, perfect garden, and he said they could eat the fruit of all the trees in the whole garden except for one tree. Just don't eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, Satan came along, and he tricked Eve into taking a bite from that fruit. And then Eve gave that fruit to Adam. And when God asked them about it, Adam tried to blame Eve, and Eve tried to blame Satan. And don't get me wrong, Satan sinned big time. You could even say it's Satan's fault. And Satan was punished. And he will be punished further for all the sin, all the, the terribleness that he has brought on the world. But you know who else was punished? Adam was punished. And Eve was punished. They both knew that they should not eat from the tree. It was their responsibility to not sin. And so yeah, Satan got punished, but so did Adam and Eve. And so when we sin, if we look to the person behind us and we say, well, that guy was mean to me first, and so that's why I was mean. It may well be that that person wronged you. But that doesn't excuse your sin. Someone being mean to you does not give you the right to do wrong. There is no such thing as the right to do wrong. There is never an excuse for sin. And so if you were mean to someone because someone was mean to you first, the person who was mean to you first, they do deserve to be punished. But so do you. But that's not a very popular idea. The, the popular idea is that if you are a victim, you can do whatever you want. Right? Like they say that if someone has been mean or cruel or unkind or unfair to you, that gives you permission to be mean or cruel or unkind or unfair. But it doesn't. Any more than it gave the people who are unkind to you permission to be unkind to you in the first place. I think a lot of us don't realize that the people who hurt other people have almost always been hurt by other people themselves. The people who victimize others were usually victims themselves. So if you've been hurt by someone it's important for you to know that it was not okay for them to hurt you. Not at all. And in the same way, them hurting you does not allow you to hurt others. Someone sinning against you does not mean that you get to sin. One of the ways that we try to excuse our sin is we try to blame other people. But another way that we try to excuse our sin is we try to make it seem like not that big a deal. And that's wrong too. Like, you know, some people say, well, you know, I don't, I don't do drugs, right? Or I don't steal or, or murder people. And so I'm a, I'm a pretty good person. So if there is something that I do that's wrong, you know, it's not that big a deal, right? Like I'm trying my best, but, but sometimes I mess up just a little bit, but it, it really doesn't matter, right? Yeah, maybe I gossip or maybe, I, maybe I'm prideful or maybe I, maybe I, you know, lose my temper and say things I shouldn't say, but those things aren't that bad compared to what other people do. They are. Sin is wrong. It's never going to not be wrong. You know, not that bad is still bad, still wrong. And you're not the one who gets to decide what is really bad or kind of bad. It's all bad. And the Bible says that if you sin, the penalty for sin is death. It doesn't matter how bad the sin is. If you do what is wrong, 
you deserve to be separated from God forever and ever and ever. But Jesus came and he died for your sins. He died so that you would not have to stay away from God forever and ever and ever. He died so that you could have eternal life with him forever and ever and ever. The Bible says that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will have eternal life. But that doesn't mean that your sin isn't sin, right? Jesus came to save you, not your sin. If you believe in Jesus Christ, that means that you are justified before God. When he looks at you, he sees the goodness and, and perfection of Jesus Christ. But that does not mean that your sin has been perfected, or your sin has been excused, or your sin has been justified. Sin is still wrong. And that's another thing that people do is they try to convince themselves and others that their sin is not sin at all. It was never sin in the first place. Or they might say, well, you know, maybe God said not to do this thing, but he said that in the Old Testament, and only the New Testament matters. Or, you know, maybe maybe they said it in other places in the New Testament, but Jesus never actually said it himself. You know, the, the red letters in my Bible never said, don't do this thing. And so it's, it's okay. No, it's not. Sin is sin. The good news of Jesus Christ is not that God loves you because your sins aren't that bad. The good news of Jesus Christ is that God loves you even though your sins are that bad. Jesus doesn't love you because you're good. Jesus loves you because you are his. And the reason he died for you in the first place is because you aren't good. I'm not good. None of us are. God alone is good. And there is never an excuse for sin. Because of Jesus' perfection, you know, he never, ever sinned in his whole life. Because of Jesus' perfection and because of his sacrifice for us, we can be excused for our sin. We can be forgiven for our sin. We can be justified before God. But we are excused, not our sin. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is sin, you know, not doing the right thing. But we are not purified from unrighteousness by sugarcoating our righteousness, right? By passing the blame on to somebody else or by, by making our sin look, you know, not so bad. Or even trying to convince ourselves and others that our sin is actually a good thing. No. We are purified from unrighteousness by asking for forgiveness. If you're afraid to tell God that you have done wrong, don't be. He already knows and he loves you anyway. So my challenge for us today is that we would not try to excuse our sin. We wouldn't try to pass the blame. We wouldn't try to sugarcoat it. We would accept that we have done wrong. And we would ask God for forgiveness. And we would get back up and try again. Doesn't matter how bad your sin is, God will always forgive you. Doesn't mean that what you did was right. But it does mean that you are forgiven. There's no excuse for sin. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And whew, this was kind of... I don't know, I felt like I was kind of harsh on this one, but it's important. It's important for us to recognize that, that when we do something wrong, it's wrong. And it doesn't do us any good to try to, you know, pass the blame or, or sugarcoat it. it. It is wrong. Sin is wrong. There's never an excuse for sin. But I also really hope that you heard and, and remember that there is a way out. Our sin cannot be excused, but we can be forgiven. We can be justified before God. And it's easy. You know, it's easy for us. You know, God God came to earth and he, he died a terrible, horrible death so that we could have eternal life. And he died so that it could be this easy for us. All you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ and you will have eternal life. All you have to do is ask for forgiveness and you will have it. Period. It doesn't matter how bad your sin is, God will forgive you. Your sin is never bigger than God's love for you. But it's really important that we recognize that there is never an excuse for sin. 